Okay, that's fine for there. What I wanted to do now was talk about building some random tools. So you can see I have some different little tools down here, or custom tools, I mean. What I did with the scrape tool here is I went into the sculpt tool menu. I did an add tool. You can give it any name you want. Okay, so you could create a new tool in there. And once you drop that down, it's going to drop whatever parameters you have set on that tool when you've hit add tool. So it's going to preserve the original tool, but it's going to drop down a copy of that tool essentially. That's what I did with this, this random scrapes tool. And all I've done there is the random scrapes tool, I've got my strength setting on something that works, um, and I'm just using a simple square. Again, that's just the stamp, okay, in here. And I have a nice stamp spacing going on. The buildup is just at the default around 50 on there. And then we can set things like the minimum size and the minimum strength, right? So the minimum size is not going to affect, pen pressure is not going to affect, it's always going to be what my brush strength, is, um, brush size is set to. Strength, I played with the minimum strength, so I don't have as much um, control with my pen pressure on my tablet as I work, just because I want this kind of hardened look on this. So random scrapes, so what we're working with here is the brush size is going to give us our overall effect as we go. So let's go down on these guys and see what this little tool does. And the reason why you want to create these custom tools is to kind of save yourself from constantly changing the settings on your brushes. It becomes very useful just to keep uh, a couple of tools that you're going to come back to here and there. And, um, whoops, it's too small. There we go. And to just be able to jump into them and, and still have my scrape tool preserve the way I was working with it before. So you can see the effect I'm getting. I'm getting these really kind of chipped um, settings on here. And what's happening is the stamp that I'm applying is actually being applied in a random fashion. So rotation, um, the scaling, the contrast, the overall effect of this, um, this tool, this stamp is being randomized across the surface as I work. And this gives us, you know, helps break up the surface, that's for sure, right? Quickly break up the surface a little more. This guy here certainly needs some, some action in here. Build it up. It's great for just working in around those edges there that you really want to break up if you don't want them that rounded. And then by working with our brush size, you'll see we're going to get quite dramatic different effects on there as well. So. I'm going to leave him a little bit kind of medium to small sized here just to hammer in those overall effects. And that's fine. Now if we move, so you can see the overall effect that we're starting to work with here on our our stone or rock structure. And as I said, you know, it's it's not something that you just have to sign off on. It's something that you'll come back to repeatedly, especially when we really start detailing and cracking these um, stones up. One thing I wanted to point out while we're in here, let's grab the foamy brush. Again, a great brush for, it's kind of like a softer, much softer feeling kind of sculpt brush here. I'm going to use this to space out uh, these, these toes. Whoops, that's much too hard on there, so I'm going to bring that down. What's the fall off here? This fall off here, it's just uh, I've adjusted the overall default main fall off right here. Let's look at the difference where it falls off sharp. I've just taken that one there and I've given a full brush but then a little tiny bit of a soft fall off on there so this will work. I use this fall off quite a bit actually. Um, so now I can get in here and just start using the inverse, using my control and let's break up these toes a little bit here. All right, so not necessarily a crack but more of a groove in there. Remember we used the fill brush before to combine a couple of those stones. We can certainly use our foamy or even the wax or the sculpt, whatever you prefer to use. I find the foamy does a nice even kind of soft cut in there to fill that groove or, or take out that groove. Excellent way of kind of defining these stones a little bit. We're going to get into some other tools that can cut, undercut the stones using some vector displacement here in a little bit as well. So I'm just going around and kind of defining the edges of these these rocks and these boulders with the inverse of my foam foamy brush on there. So some things to point out, the control key is essentially hitting this function in here. You see that we have an invert function button on all of these tools on the top. So when I'm hitting control I'm actually accessing that invert function on there. That's all that's happening there. So 
that's fine enough. Let's leave this part alone and move up to the arm on here as well. And again, start to scrape in our overall feel and form and structure of of some stone or some chipped up rock and boulder. The other thing too as well is once we start to paint this guy up, we want to use different boulders, right? Different stone, different rock. So not every rock and boulder is going to have that same effect. I'm really kind of hammering and chiseling a lot of these guys up. We really want to vary the different boulders. We don't want them to be made out of, you know, completely individual different stones, but we don't want them to be made of all the exact same stones. But we do want some unity to carry out through the, the character, right, through the design. We want something that, you know, kind of looks not just like a rock pile that's come to life, but something that's kind of comprised of this root and stone, uh, different kind of forest or cliff um, boulders and rock. There we go. And I was talking about this smooth kind of kind of a granite like structure. Well, it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth on here. Let's grab our random scrapes and maybe bring down the overall strength of that. Let's see what we get here when we that's too much and too sharp on there. So what I'm going to do is bring this brush. So you can see the difference of getting the fall off right there. Very sharp edges from the squares and if we work with this guy here, I'm going to bring the strength down. We can get a little bit softer, but we can kind of get this a little bit more of a stone. It kind of looks pillowy right now, doesn't it, on his this kind of club arm. So I want to build that up a bit here to or chisel away at it a bit to give it a little bit of a more solid structure, more of a solid hardened surface on there. And again, the idea of this forearm is it is kind of a club, maybe a weapon or just something that he kind of drags along. It hasn't really cracked or formed into other things here. On the other side of this character, we have kind of a full hand or a four-digit hand anyway, so being comprised out of stones and rocks. This guy here is going to be this big kind of open club. Let's bring that up a bit. There we go. So again, I... I don't want this as chiseled as the other ones, but I don't really want it to be like a polished uh, granite countertop or anything like that. I don't want that look or feel to it. I want more of a kind of weathered, bit of a softer look, but it doesn't need to be completely perfect here, that's for certain. That's fine for where we want to go with that for now. We're going to sculpt in some roots, a lot of roots over top of this structure here later. Okay, another thing that we want to look at here, I mentioned that um, we were building up these rocks on the left leg and this left arm, we were just focusing on that. And then at some point I was going to stop there so that I'm not repeating myself completely. The same process that I'm using here, I'm using throughout the entire character. The difference is this left leg, his left below his knee, is going to be a kind of a tree root structure that actually builds and kind of twists up through him underneath these rocks and, um, and stones and kind of wraps out around him and then builds up into this tree up his back here. Um, so, I'll, so in the planning there, I want stone or boulders for the most part around his body, but I want to leave that place alone for now. I'm going to leave his head alone for now because I'm going to do something different there. I want this kind of skull rock formation there later. And most of his back I'm going to leave alone. We'll fill in some spaces in the roots there later with some rocks. This arm is primarily rock with some roots twisting around, but I want some big roots twisting around his torso there as well. So for now, something to look at here. Um, I'm going to put a whole new sculpt layer in, and we can go to our sculpt tool. This is where it's kind of handy to build a new or add a tool to it here. I've done that already. I have a VDM stamp sculpt tool and another sculpt tool that is just sculpt VDM. And the idea here is this is just set to be what I would use it for for a vector displacement stencil. Leaving the stamp spacing at the default. The buildup you may want to play with. I've put it to 65 for the specific stencil I'm going to use and the strength is all the way up to 100. The falloff I'm using is that big falloff with a little bit of a soft edge on there. Again, 
customize your fall off to what you like. Um, the f default fall offs are excellent here in Mudbox to be able to get uh, some nice desired effects. I'm not using any stamp image, of course, on there. I'm going to use this stencil. Um, there's a little bonus video that I'll include here um, that you can look at for how to create vector displacement maps to be used as stamps or stencils. So in this case here, I've built a vector displacement map of some simple stones, some simple rocks and boulders that we can place in here. So uh, by all means, don't use this as, well, literally written in stone or anything, but for um, it's great for just kind of blocking in like I was doing there earlier. Um, so I'm going to use this tool here. I've got a new layer down, and you'll see that if I rub this vector displacement map in, we can start getting some of these stones in here. And I've got a bunch of different ones in here. Um, oop, I actually hit the a little bit of those little boulders on the side there. I'll just erase that. And we'll go back to our sculpt tool and turn that stencil on. And what we can do with this, this is just primarily here just to give you something to kind of start working in some of those base structures and shapes. And you can see that the map itself does include some kind of hammered down chips or, or um, kind of sculpted surface on those rocks, but by all means just use it in any way you want to. This is a great way to just quickly put these forms in rather than um, going through the entire process if you don't want to. It's not cheating at all if you're building up some sculpt forms, saving them as maps, and then coming back to use them throughout your sculpts here. Um, that's what this is very powerful for, for using vector displacement. Of course, there's these little stones in here. I could place those. You know, maybe we have an area that I want to place them in. Um, all these are just some little boulders that I can give a different little effect in there as well. So that's fine. I'm actually going to take those guys out of there though. But on here with these here, it's it gives you a nice, you can go ahead and use these stones as they are or further customize them, right? So get the scrape tool out again and start to start, start to kind of bash, whoops, start to kind of bash that down um, to change the overall effect on it. So let's go back to our scrape here and just kind of, there we go, and just kind of bash that in change the overall look of things here, right? How sharp or how smooth we want the uh, the rock to be. Anyways, the idea there is the vector displacement map, you could grab that and start filling in this surface quite quite nicely here. You can even tile the map to have it spread out, but it's just a couple of different rocks on that map just to give you uh, something that you can kind of hammer down on the surface and begin to formulate into or form a, a bit of base structure and form on there. So that we're gonna move on in the next video, I'm actually going to step ahead. So I'm going to step ahead to a fully rock or, or the base structure of this character finished here so that we can move forward with some uh, different sculpting effects here.